Yes, you read that title right. Grant Cardone and all those other real estate gurus may have lied to you. I'm here to explain how it's not quite so simple to say that renting is better than buying a home as an investment. And I'm gonna break that down for you in this video. Linked below, you're gonna find some resources, one from Scott Trench, a video from Ben Felix, and another one from Graham Stephan, all of which provide some really good information about how this decision is actually very nuanced, and there's a lot that goes into it. Um, basically, it's possible over a long timeline to turn a single family home or a condo into a better investment than the stock market simply by buying right. And it's actually not that hard to do. Whether you're putting 3.5% down or 20% down over the long term, real estate tends to appreciate, and your cost of living doesn't increase as quickly when you're owning a home as it does when you're renting. And I'm gonna explain that a lot in my spreadsheet in just a minute, but real quick, I'm just gonna walk you through Scott Trenches because he is way smarter than me and he's been crushing it. If you've watched Bigger Pockets or listened to them, uh, you've probably heard of him and he's moved up a lot within their company because he's a really smart guy. Um, Basically, he's making some assumptions, and I've made some others that I think are a little more conservative than his, but he's really done a lot of research to back his up. Basically, over time, uh, everything is going to go up in value. Property values go up, your cost of rent goes up, um, all of those things are going to start to adjust over time. So he's put in some calculations here, which explain that. Again, this is linked below. You can go through it with a fine-tooth comb yourself. But this is basically what it looks like over a 10-year period. Um, this is the cost of cash out of your pocket. Uh, the red line is for a homeowner, the blue line is for a renter, and the green line is for a house hacker. So in this context, he actually would be kind of leaning away from home ownership. But as, you, as we scroll down his spreadsheet, you're going to see how that's not entirely true either. Um, the impact to your net worth over 10 years, as you can see, um, when you actually start to you know, turn your home into an investment from day one by house hacking, there's a huge gain relative to rentership and home ownership. But you can see that homeownership actually does a little bit better than rentership. Um, and then your cash savings reinvested. You can see, again, there's this exponential gain between house hacking versus homeowning and renting. And he likes to paint a negative picture of both of these items as compared to house hacking. But I'm going to show how I don't think that that's a fully nuanced approach. And there are some other elements that I think can be very valuable to consider. So this is my spreadsheet. Um, and I will share this below as well. Um, this is very, very simple, and there are some things to keep in, keep in mind. There are obviously property maintenance costs, um, and there are ownership costs that will go up over time. Um, but in essence, if you buy a property with 5% down or 3.5% down, your down payment is very small. Uh, and over time, the value of the property is going to exceed the benefits that you get from reinvesting the difference in the stock market. And here's what that would look like. Let's say you take $15,000, and that's your either 3.5% down or 5% down, whether you're using FHA or conventional on a single family or condo. Let's say you buy a $300,000 house. Over time, the house is going to increase in value about 2% annually, and then the cost of your mortgage insurance and your taxes and home insurance are going to go up about 2% annually as well, up until year seven, at which time you can get rid of the PMI because presumably you're at at least 20% equity. Um, in addition to that, um, your net worth is growing over that time as you're paying down that loan. So that's what this is going to roughly look like. Um, by the end of year one, you've already basically built yourself a little nest egg of about $27,000. That's your down payment plus the loan pay down and the appreciation all being factored in. By the time year 30 rolls around, you've essentially got a house that's worth $543,000. Your mortgage payment's gone up to just shy of $2,500. And because you've stayed on top of the maintenance of the property, this value is stable, you're at that 543, your net worth has gone up pretty substantially. Um, another thing to note is that between year seven and nine, you're gonna get rid of that PMI, um, which is gonna save you about $200 a month. Um, so you'll see a little reduction in your mortgage payment around that time horizon. Now let's compare that to option two, continue renting and invest your savings in the stock market. Now let's say that over time your income goes up. So even as the rent goes up, you're still able to keep investing $300 a month in the stock market. Stock market goes up 9% annually, not quite as high as Scott Trench said, but this is a pretty conservative analysis here. Um, you could be as low as seven, but I think nine is pretty realistic. Let's say you park that 15,000 and then you're reinvesting 300 every month. 
by the end of year one, you're basically going to have a net worth impact $20,274. Your rent also, if your landlord is doing their job correctly, has raised 2%. And by the end of year one, your rent has gone from 1800 to 1836. By year three, you're at 1910. By year five, the rent's at 1987. And between year seven and nine, your rent actually now is exceeding the mortgage. So this is an element where if you stay in place for a long time, immediately you start to save money over a long time horizon, just in terms of the rent. As we get to the end of this 30 year time frame, you can see actually that the total gains on your capital and the invested capital basically accumulate to a net worth of about $269,000 and your rent has now gone up to 3260. So this is where over a long time horizon, it starts to become way more beneficial to simply buy and live in your residence if you plan to stay somewhere for a long time. Um, in future videos, I'm also gonna break down the benefits of uh, house hacking a single family or condo, which would be basically bringing in renters who live in the other bedrooms or doing that with a duplex, three family or four family, depending on the lifestyle you're looking for. Um, so I will break that down in the future, but this is just a very simplified version of um, a breakdown here to show you that when people tell you that it's way better to invest in the stock market and you should never buy a home, they are not necessarily steering you right, depending on what you believe your personal situation to look like. So please keep this in mind. And when you're making that decision on whether to buy or rent, factor in how long you plan on living where you are. Thank you and have a great day.